I'm Caitlin Wallace, and I teach five hours of seventh grade math. I teach pre-algebra, first, fifth, and sixth hour, and I co-teach with Miss Dixon, second and third hour. Hello, I'm Miss Dixon. We're super excited to have you in class this year. Um, if you ever have questions or concerns, please feel free to reach out to either of us because we do share full responsibility of our two co-taught classes. Here's our contact information for both of us. Please email or call anytime and we'll try to get right back to you. So what will we be learning in seventh grade math? Um, we do spiral back to a lot of things that students have seen before in previous grades, fourth, fifth, sixth grade. We'll come back to those, review what students have already learned or where they left off, and then go a little bit further or take it a little bit deeper. Uh, and then we also have some new topics this year, um, geometry, some probability and stats, some inequalities. So it'll be a blend of building on what they already know and a few new things as well. If students say it's review, it might feel like that at the beginning, but we're going to keep adding on new layers and um, new information past where they've been before. So a few things about uh, the pre-algebra classes, so hours one, five, and six. Um, you can pause if you want to read through this in more detail, um, but pre-algebra is to get students ready for algebra next year in eighth grade. So we do cover all of the seventh grade content and curriculum and then a good chunk of the eighth grade content and curriculum. Um, and then hopefully at the end of that, students are ready to go into algebra, which is typically a ninth grade class um, in the eighth grade. So we do have a little bit higher expectations with a faster pace, a little bit uh, more workload, more independent um, studying for those students to help get them ready for algebra. So all the sections um, are a flipped class, okay? So that means we do lecture or notes as a video at home. And then that allows us to do more practice and homework uh, together in class. So the benefits of that are that students can watch the videos at their own pace. They can pause, rewind, um, re go back and rewatch a video on something if they were still a little confused or as a review. And it gives us more time in class to really work together, ask questions, and do that homework practice instead of students doing it at home on their own. So we usually have about one video per section or probably about two videos per week um, that students will be expected to watch at home as homework and then fill in the note sheet. So with those video notes, um, they'll get a packet at the beginning of each chapter that has like the kind of fill in the blank notes for all of the videos for that chapter. So students can find the links for all the videos in Google Classroom. They're up for the whole chapter at the beginning of that chapter. We do ask students to really listen to the video with the sound on, okay? A lot of students will mute it and just kind of write down what they see, copy what they see on the screen but then they're missing all of the explanation that goes along with it. Um, we also ask students to really pause the video and try the practice problems before they hit play and check their answers to make sure they're getting that practice. And we say it's okay to have questions. Um, the video is not the only time you're gonna see the information. We'll come back, summarize the video, review together, do more examples, more practice. So um, it's okay to have questions or still be a little confused after you watch a video. If you have technology issues or questions or concerns, um, if your internet goes out or you uh, don't have a you know reliable service in your area, any of those things, if that's an issue, just let us know. We can figure out a plan and make ways for it to be available and have time to do that at school if you need to. So just let us know. So grading for this class um, is 70% based on tests, 20% based on quizzes, and 10% effort scores. And those effort scores, we call them effort scores in the computer, um, but it's really just kind of a weekly average. So we um, check in homework, video notes, class participation over the week, and then we average that at the end of the week and enter one score. So um, I'll point out here that it um, shows that we do not do test retakes, but students can retake quizzes. Um, and I'll go over 
over the requirements for that a little bit later on. Also a note on homework. So homework is viewed as a chance to practice. So we don't grade homework based on accuracy or having the correct answers. It's a good, a good place to make mistakes and learn and fix those mistakes and learn from them. So it's not collected and graded on a daily basis, but we will always go over it. So students always have a chance to you know, ask questions, get help, fix the ones they got wrong, um, and check with an answer key. At Ore Creek, we do grade on a four point scale, which might be different than you're used to coming from farms. Um, so this is in the syllabus with more detail, but it's, all, it's also here if you just a kind of an overview. So on the four point scale, might be more what you're used to in high school or colleges. Um, so we would like grade a quiz. If a student got a 92% on the quiz, you would see a 3.7 entered into the grade book. If a student got a 75% on the quiz, we would see, you would see a 2.0 in the grade book. So here are the requirements for retaking a quiz. Um, students can retake a quiz anytime as long as they have a 2.0 for their effort scores. So that means they're keeping up with their video notes and doing the homework or the practice at home. Um, there's a correction sheet that you can get here in class or it's also posted on Google Classroom where they kind of fix the mistakes that they got wrong and do another practice problem, get a parent signature, and then bring that back to me and I'll give you a retake quiz. And you can keep the higher score. So students would keep the higher score if they do better on the retake. Um, just make sure it's done within two weeks of the original quiz. Okay, I wanted to point out, this is um, like a snapshot from Google Classroom. So when students log into Google Classroom, up at the top, if they're in the Classwork tab, um, right at the top, I try to keep just general class information, things that you might want to go back to over and over. So there is um, the correction sheet that I was just talking about for quizzes. You can access it here and print it off at home if you want. And also lesson plans. And when you open this um, tab here, it will open a Google Sheet. Just make sure you go to the correct week. So here's an example of what it looks like. There are tabs down here to toggle between different weeks. So if you go to the correct week, you can see what we're doing. Um, so we have class, we have class and then what the homework would be. Um, and usually we try to plan out about a week or week and a half in advance so you can look ahead as well and see when things are coming up. Or if you're absent, check here and see what you missed or what might be due. So that's a good one to bookmark, the lesson plans, and um, also the class syllabus is up there with more detailed information. So um, we do have homework most days, but I would hope that it's always less than 30 minutes. Um, some of the videos, they're usually about 15 minutes in length, and then um, a few extra minutes for pausing and doing some practice and checking. Um, or any homework that students might finish if they didn't get it done in class, but we wouldn't expect students to spend more than 30 minutes a night on homework. Um, so reach out, let us know if that is happening for you, um, and maybe we can find some ways to make it you know, streamlined or make it easier on you. Let us know if it seems to be more than 30 minutes on a night. One of the questions we get a lot um, is how to check math homework. And we talk about it in class, but here's just some hints I wanted to throw up there for you if you wanna pause and look this over more. And um, also just a reminder to check that we have your correct email address and your checking grades in Parent Portal. We send a lot of updates and emails through Parent Portal um, with the email address you have on file. So thanks so much. Um, email me if you have any questions.